All right, welcome in, welcome in. Paramay Trades, this is Paramay's Trade Journal. I'm gonna keep the ball rolling here today. We just did a couple of currency uh, commodities, futures, Mexican peso and Canadian dollar. So on the top of my list this week, and probably a couple of other ones on there too, but we're gonna do, it's a little late, it's Saturday, but COT report Friday roundup edition for the indexes. So we're going to look at the indices. Um, fair warning, it's probably going to be probably like a 20 or 30 minute video, but <clears throat> a lot of data to work with, uh, a lot of um, you know price action happening in the market lately. So let's just let's just get to it. Let's just get to it. Part of a new initiative uh, within the last couple of um, uh, just this week, actually. To, to to break down the COT report into segments so we can look at them individually. So you guys aren't spending, you know, 40 or 50 minutes looking at, uh, you know, 50-something commodities that you're not going to trade. But if you're looking at the indexes, this is the place to be. We're going to look at commercial interest. We're going to see what we can see. So let's just get started. So, mm, top of the list, well, we're just sort of ordered here by by indexes but looking at the top of the list and looking at the Dow Jones looking at the Dow Jones still in a bullish position uh, the Nasdaq in a bullish position S&P doesn't look as bullish as the rest but these charts are all seem to be following themselves or, or one another and then uh, the Russell which would you know was something I was pretty interested in last week let's go Let's go upcoming week. Let's just put all these on the upcoming week, uh, you know, to watch. You can play one or the other. They all seem to be following the Dow Jones, but the Russell looked quite a bit stronger. Uh, seemed to be moving quite a bit better. So not in bullish territory on the Russell, as so far as commercial interest is concerned on the six-month index and the three-year index, but mm, these top two looking pretty good on the six-month so let's just quickly drill down and then we'll look at the charts too. No big surprise here on the Dow Jones. We were in bearish territory. Would the market sell off? And then we're, you know, sentiment is shifting quite handsomely. So these numbers were pretty these numbers were pretty good. So uh still holding within the same range, not really closing out net long uh positions here. Holding the positive. Holding positive. What does that mean for the week to come? The Russell, uh, you know, we looked at this. Uh, I don't know if we looked at this independently, but at the market top, we thought that there was some business going on with commercial interest because they just were not holding a positive outlook. Getting down un underneath that 20% territory and then now, you know, slightly changing their sentiment a little bit here in, in the mid-range. Nasdaq wasn't one that I was playing, wasn't one that I was looking at, but look at the look at the the sentiment shift from you know s seven weeks ago. Bullish territory on the Nasdaq, so we're going to look at that chart too. S and P, you know, same thing. You know, they're all kind of you know middle ground, but you know the price action is moving. So let's do it. Do we do we miss one? Do we miss our, you know, we got, we got all three, right? So index is looking uh, pretty decent. What's going to happen in the week to come? Ooh, which chart is better than the next? I don't really know. <clears throat> let's just take a look. This is our chart on the, um, so let's do, you know, I haven't looked at the NASDAQ. I haven't looked at the NASDAQ nearly as much as I had the other charts. So let's look at the NASDAQ first. And let's just, we're going to go straight down the list. We're going to look at COT and uh, see what we can see. See what we can see. So, you know, clear and present, um, you know, price action lately. But the NASDAQ doesn't, the indexes are always a little bit, we've been in a bull market, right? For some time. So working with extremes is just, so far as the commitment of traders go on commercial interest. Obviously this this sharp drop and a break below the 20% was a pretty good indicator that this is, this is going to go lower, right? 
this is definitely going to go lower. Yep, yep, yep. We know the virus business, global economies, fighting over crude, uh, you know, uh, industrial suffering, but uh, the metals, I can't wait to do the metals because the metals look really, really good. Probably top in the list of commercial interest right now, especially gold. It was a really good chart. Gold was a really good chart to uh, to get yourself aligned with. So, uh, you know, so we broke into this bearish territory back here, but not for very long, so about four weeks, and we got out of here. We got out of here. So, did they think that the you know the top was in here, you know perhaps? This is a six month index, so that you know our three year index holds quite a bit more weight, and we're just still above that fifty percent range, not at extremes until until back in this territory. And it just how well does commercial interest? I mean, I really feel like we, in terms of the indexes, you really have to look back further, and we need more data uh, in this bull run <clears throat> to make sense of this. But we're gonna work with what we got on the one year chart because this is the data that we have. So and this you know sentiment switches so drastically sometimes with these guys. And this last leg, this last push up looked like the you know the six month index had a little bit of promise. And then even here on the six month index, so it was just a lot of confusion to make sense out of what commercial interest is doing with um Mm, we're finding positions. Mm. Well, we do like to see the, this, this combination of things, though, at least. So if we, you know, if this looks a little bit confusing in terms of commercial interest, you know, we had WPR in the oversold range. No big surprise there. Mm, we had open interest relatively low. This bodes well for commercial interest, and this bodes well when, when th they're starting to reduce their their net short positions and and starting to get out of there so this i mean this looked this looked a little bit more promising on the six month index but i mean if this was at extremes then you've got a real recipe for positive swing to the upside and it almost kind of feels like it looks like they were late late to the party but closing out the net short positions getting back above the 20 percent so we're no longer at extremes and now we're brushing up against the, um, <clears throat> you know, that that, that eighty percent mark where they're where they're still bullish. But do you want to be a buyer up in here? WPR cooking as hard as it is, or as high as as it is. I uh, really like market sentiment this low. I really like market sentiment as low as it is. And I hope we got the numbers right. I really do. Well, when's the last time we looked at the you know the, the Nasdaq numbers to double check and make sure we had it right? I'm pretty sure we do. But you know, calm still holding in the positive territory, and that it typically bodes pretty well uh, in the three-year index getting up there too. So are we at a market bottom here. I mean, it, this looks like a nice swing out of here. And the chart is still really strong. But do we want to be a buyer up in this range at this moment in time? Let's say we'd probably wait for... I was looking for a short setup on the Russell, just because of where it was in the channel. But let's just take a look at the NASDAQ and pull up our two chart and take a peek. It looks like I did do a little bit of work on this previously. So really violent uh, downtrend channel, uh, it, you know, and that's what we like to see. That's what we like to see is uh, better buying opportunities on the 1.25 coefficient and below the 1.0 coefficient. So found really good support here. This may have been a pretty good indicator that this was just selling off just too much, and there's so much whip going on here. Where was the pivot to work with? Where was our key indicator? And this, I, I remember this day very, very fondly. I remember this opening candle that occurred in here that really kind of set the tempo for the direction or the sentiment change that uh, was about to occur. So where were we? Where are we now? 
where are we now? So we're looking like we're finding some support uh, here at this, you know, this 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 high value range, this pivot that's working up for us. So you got the low value down here, better opportunities to be a buyer uh, down on the um, on the 1.0 coefficient, and even you know down here for a, a scalp play. I mean, all these charts look the same. So you know, we're gonna do, we're gonna we're gonna do the Nasdaq and we're gonna do the Russell because the Nasdaq, uh, the uh, the Dow Jones. And the S&P, they all look almost identical. So let me show you this chart, and you're going to look at the other ones, and you'll say, "Hey, this, you know, this looks pretty darn similar." So we made adjustments because now we have this this channel to work with. So now we're working with some fresh. Now we're working with some fresh pivots. So where did these ones come from? Let's just look at the uptrend channel to see, you know, what's going on. Let's use blue. Well, obviously we've got uh, you know our first our first point of contact on the zero coefficient of the uptrend channel, right? And then I think we're using this one of these two pivots. I, I think this was the first one that we were using. So we've got a nice uptrend channel to work with, and it looks pretty strong around the point of control. So this looks like a good you know this looks like a good point of control. A lot of struggle, a lot of trading going on here. Uh, are we are we buyers on the point of control? Is this some kind of a, a build up for a breakdown lower? <clears throat> it's hard to say. We're just trading middle middle of the ground right now. In what are they after? So better opportunities up near, uh, you know, this high value range to be a seller. But now we've we've flipped this. And now we've got some support going on here in this value high, you know, four hour range that, that, that we're working with. But where are there better opportunities to be a buyer to get in on this trade? It, it, it's somewhere, you know, below the point of control. And your better opportunities to be a short seller are definitely up on you know, the higher end of the range. So is this going to, this thing going to cook or is this thing going to dip? Well, it's hard to take one, one or the other at this point. But if you were a buyer, you know, down in here, you're you're, you're still. We got we're working with higher lows here. Working with higher lows. So do I do I want to play? We want to play the Nasdaq this week. What are they after? What are they after? You know, there's some shorts up in here. There's this high value range, uh, top of this, you know. Uh, congestion that's working up in here. A target might be here. Better opportunities to be, you know, a short seller uh, for, you know, scalp play up in here, but not at extremes. Trading in the higher end of the range. Any opportunity for buyers to to to, to get in here and step in, they, they did so uh, along or below the, the 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 point of control, and now we're just trading right in the middle of the ground. So it's what's the market saying to us that it, you know it wants to. What does it want to do? Strong resource, strong rejection, strong impulse coming off of here. I got to think that there's going to be some pretty decent selling up in here and up in this area. <clears throat> that should go without saying. That should go without saying. So we are finding support in this area. This is a you know, lot of work going on in here. What's our market memory telling us? Uh, you know. 1.0 coefficient, struggling in this area, finding rejection market memory, you know, right in that area again. It looks like selling is, it's pretty good. Pretty decent amount of selling going in this area. They retool, buyers retool, find support on this downtrend, negative 2.5 coefficient, and this is, you know, obviously the place to be a buyer. So this is why we adjusted our uptrend channel uh, to use this area. So, you know, big, Big nice, you know, nice area of congestion working in here. One would think that if we do retrace, that this is going to be, this is going to be the area I think that needs to be tested. This seven six two nine, and this this is a way better opportunity I think to be a buyer if you're looking. But middle ground, it's uh, I have a hard time being a buyer here. I'm looking at some other charts and I'm thinking that they're a little bit better to trade right now until a better setup comes along. 
but boy, if it comes down into this range, I like this confluence uh, on a set, on a seven six two nine as being a good good opportunity. But I would be a little bit concerned that if we break this zero coefficient and we find rejection here, this you know this could be some trouble. This could be some trouble for the indexes. But here's here, here's some targets, and that's a nice round number too, right? Eighty four you know, about the eighty four hundred mark. So we target this uh, this 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 pivot high, and this is where all the shooting started. So there is gonna be there's gonna be some work going on in here. I I would think that we're not gonna get up over that too easily, and then you know we're gonna target this value up in here as well at the nine thousand mark. So what well, doesn't that look nice, right? So the nine thousand and eighty four hundred there is. Hmm. Is there enough buildup going on here in this point of control to pop higher and find support? And this thing's going to rip. <clears throat> so a lot, of, a lot of trading going on in this rain, in this area. Uh, like shifting value, as Lorenzo would say, is you know not. I mean, not really. I mean, it's right on that point of control. Good business going on in here. A lot of good business. A lot of trading going on in the upper half uh, between the you know the median line and the uh, the 1.0. Not at extremes just yet. And I would be really cautious up here if this thing decides to spike and and, and get up here that quickly. That there is going to be some strong rejection. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yep. Mm. Tough chart. A lot of whip going on in here. A lot of whip, but find support. Find support. Have we bottomed out? We haven't retested these lows. We may not. We may just we just cook out of here. But I like this. I like this. You know this this buildup going on in this area. Ooh, what is it gonna do? What is it gonna do? Well, we're, we got some. We got some support in here. We got some support, but did we get like a nice ascending triangle look for a break higher? We gotta watch the market. Let's annihilate this and then just take. I mean, that looks like a nice ascending trial on that triangle on that on that point of control. This could break higher. This really certainly could. And then so now we're working in this small range. We've got the small range to work with uh, right in here. We're working. We're working. We're working right in here. Pivot high. Pivot low. Here's the low value of the range. It looks like a double, bo some double bottom action. There's some liquidity going on in this area. If we break, and you know, we just barely break the high. Just barely break that, so it did. You know, we did kind of take, take the high. Will it go a little bit, you know, higher? And I like this ascending triangle look. So, your know, breakout trader. This thing starts to cook tomorrow, or, or yeah, you know, tomorrow. I wouldn't be surprised, but and generally speaking, I mean, do, you, do the patterns always work out in the way that you know you think an ascending triangle is triangle's probably going to break higher? I mean, it might, but where is the confluence, and then where is where are we going to get some uh, so, some resistance? Some resistance up in here. Ooh, markets are looking tough, right? God, it would have been nice to be a buyer right down here and just hold for the last two or three weeks. Reestablish your your buying down in here. But if you're an intraday trader. Swing trader, how are you playing this? I'm I'm playing this level. Because of the reaction off of this pivot to this pivot high. Oh, I'm sorry. From this reaction to this reaction, it doesn't look like much, but it's it's, it's pretty decent because I think all the shooting started right about here too. And so we're gonna be you know kind of some aggressive selling that happens in there trying to break back up into that range. It looks it looks a lot like accumulation, folks. And if we can stick to this channel. 
let's bring up a different chart so that we can just look at the, 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 the short term potential here, the short term uh, uptrend channel, which is which will be right about here. So we pivot low into this congestion and we get uh, some nice movement like that. And this is breaking down a little bit. This is breaking down a little bit so far as uh, uptrend, you know. Sh so this is our intermediate, I would say, uptrend channel. It's not our larger picture, but, you know, good time to be a seller over the uh, 1.0 coefficient, and then we break down the point control, and this is starting to look weaker. So, mm, you know, just about a double top action, and we just pierce it just a little bit, but this, this, this. I may stand corrected here, and this may come down a little bit. Let's pivot high. Just tag it. And now where is the, you know, where's our target? Which, which would probably be down here. Hmm. It looks a little, you know, lower time frames. Looks a little, it looks a little weak in terms of this uptrend channel. But, uh... We have seen before where we break down these channels, and um, you know, we break back up into them. Lower time frame looks a little weaker. Looks a little weaker. This might be a little overextended. <clears throat> and if we do retrace off the bottom, where are we going? Where are we going on the Nasdaq? Oh, Fifty percent range, and you know, we're right into this cluster. That's possible possible it's possible we already found support in this in this you know in this area once before how eager our buyer is going to be let's look at um let's look at a higher time frame find out how far we've retraced well, we're right up against that huh let's clear this out where are we in terms of correction Oop. to the upside? I remember that the Dow Jones looks pretty darn similar, so we don't need to look at that. Ooh, right. Ooh, just traded through right into the 50% range, and then we're right here. We are right here where there was support and a pivot out of there. Hmm. I think this could break down. And we've got support on the, you know, the EMA. I've got a little EMA to, to, to give us a little bit of information here. And it's trying to maintain it, but... Not trying to guess here, but I, I, I think this... I think this can retrace a little bit. I think the indexes can come down a little bit this, this week. Open's going to be critical, but I would be concerned about uh, a false break higher. So we are into this 50% range, this 50% retrace range, oh, 618 in the 60% in the 618 range. I don't, know, I don't know how helpful that is, but maybe they come up, they target this swing, and we get a lot of shooting. We get a lot of shooting going on. And this thing goes the other way. So there's a 9,000, there's a 400. Same look. Boy. Boy. 8,500, 8,400, 8,500. I got I to think that there will be some, some selling pressure. Unless it, the market is really convinced that this thing is just bottomed out and, and we're going to go the other way. Careful of breakdown. Uh, I'm not gonna see something on this chart before I want to make any moves on this. 
Because I'm not, I'm, I'm not a buyer on the point of control, but it just looks, it looks appealing. On that point of control, it looks pretty good. We're trading on the higher end of the range, or on the higher end of the, uh, you know, the point of control. Good bounce, but I gotta think that there's some pressure up here, and I would be looking for a uh, you know a short opportunity. Let's look at the two again in this area. I think we're gonna find some resistance up in there. It's a pretty good resistance, and 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 you know maybe we get some some retrace off the the swing, but it's a bull. For now, it's bullish. Trading on the point of control. I really like to be a, a seller up in this area, even for a short scalp like some, you know something like this, which is you know 300 points or more. Oh, this is about it's about, about 600 points. Okay, so I mean that's the look at uh, you know the Nasdaq. Commercial interest, I mean, not as bullish, right? On uh, Three, not well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're up there. We're up there. Let's take a quick look at the Russell, and then uh, let's get out of here. <laughs> so this, I mean, this looks I mean, so much better of a chart. This looks aggressive. I mean, this just looks really good. And they, for, for so long, they had held this uh, short position here, or this um, <clears throat> net short positions, that really made us think that. The rest of the markets were going to follow the small caps because they had held for so long their net short positions up in here. And it's almost like they were they were already hip to this, they were already wise to this. WPR in the in, in the overbought territory up in here and holding holding bearish. Holding bearish. Time to get out. Open interest is relatively high. Market sentiment's blazing. And we just but now what we got is market sentiment in the last year at the lowest it's been in April here. And now we're getting a little bit of, of, of movement. Whoop. Ah, come on. And now we're getting <clears throat> quite a bit of, uh, of market sentiment shift here by commercial interest. And we're really positive back here too on the three-year index. Up in this territory, just not, just not working. Price travels up, less optimistic. And you can see the correlation going on here. Price actions to the downside, it was just way too appealing at a thousand. Way too appealing at a thousand to not want to participate or take or, or, or start increasing net long positions and, and getting out of you know the net short positions. So clo you know, closing out the net shorts here. Bullish. Open interest relatively low, WPR oversold, boy. Hopefully, I mean, hopefully you guys got in on this. I like that W look. I, I always have. I wish it was. Um, I wish it was a little bit better, but it wasn't. So, uh, Russell looking really good, looking really good. Seems to be outperforming, I, and we're just we're above this, um, you know, high value range from off the bottom value high range here so you know where is it going and there's not much going on to the left of this chart where we could say yeah you know there's where did, where did the shooting start well a lot of the shooting started here right on that limit down day so can we come up and tag this area and it looks pretty good it looks good what do we got to work with? Mm. So here's some congestion. Here's some congestion here. Mm, there's a little bit going on here. And then here's the swing high pivot. And it looks like it's finding a little bit of support on it. Uh, and so far as retrace goes, off the high. Off the high. Where are we now? Not even close to the 50% range. So Value low. I gotta think that there's gonna be some resistance up in here at least. 
a little bit. And we're, we're, we're ripping pretty hard, so... It doesn't mean that it can't... I mean, this thing can't take off, but... Oh, we do have we do have support here. I would hate to see this break down. And what are we working with, uh, you know, for a channel? Now that we've got something to work with and this pivot to work with, and I think this is the reason why I was thinking short on a short scalp play on the Russell because we're just we're up at that up near that 1.0 coefficient, and then wow, look at that, right? This is. Much better opportunity, I would think, to be uh, to take a short scalp up in this area. And, and if this thing starts blazing, you know, if, if they do hop up over the 1.25, you got to think that this would be a much better opportunity to be the short seller. But are you a buyer blazing above the point of control at this point? I mean, it can't go. I mean, you can't go, but I'd like to see some extremes, and I'm, I'm I'm thinking short. I'm thinking about a short scout play up against this, you know, area. Looks like there would possibly be some resistance and a little bit of retrace. And I'm I'm I'm, I'm thinking like a a buying opportunity on the point of control for a little bit of a bounce play, maybe a little bit of scout, and comes down here a little bit lower. And you definitely got to start thinking about being a buyer down in this area. I'm just going to start breaking down. This is a huge channel to work with, so. Huge channel to work with. Com's a little, quite a bit more optimistic on these indexes right now, uh, but better on the, in, you know. So much better. So much better. And that's where the confluence that I saw, too. So we've got so much to work with up in this area to, to, to better be, you know, a short scalp player up in this area. And to be a buyer down here, to think about being a buyer, especially if it rebounds. Hmm. All right, that's what I got to say about the indexes this week. Uh, they're oh, 32 minutes. Well, I knew we were going to be a little bit longer. 32 minutes here, not too bad. I'm glad we got to break these, the, you know, the indexes down a little bit. We'll just revisit the, you know, where we are on the Nasdaq and, and on the Dow. Comms are really bullish, and this is, and this bodes well for the, you know, the S and P and for the Russell too, because these numbers were just horrifying back in here for many months. So this, even though we're not at extremes, looks a heck of a lot more appetizing. The last time we saw a really a bullish configuration for, for commercial interest was, oh God, back in uh, August. So this is looking a little bit better. Still hold, you know, holding Last week's position into this week, mm, it oh, looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. Positive numbers, uh, on the, you know, on the net on net longs. Uh, we haven't seen that in, in some time. All right. Um, so we've got a Discord channel, a chat community. If you guys want to come in and shoot the breeze, talk charts, talk trade, talk COT report, um, chime in. Give us your opinion. Thanks for hitting the subscribe button. Uh, that's really helpful. We really like that. Uh, and leaving comments, too. We really enjoy that. That's that's super. So uh, thanks for stopping in the channel. I hope you find yourself on the profitable side of the trade. We'll see you again on the next video.